What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Yo, it's Trayvon Copeland. We are back with another interview for Respect My Nerves. Listen, today we have a very, 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 very special guest. So special that I had to wait five years to finally get an interview with this man. Five years. I think I think you I think you're breaking up a little bit on my end. I'm breaking up a little bit on your end. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think they can hear me screaming though. I had okay. to wait five years to get brother Matthew Jones on the phone with us, man. Shouts out to this brother, man. Matthew, what's up? How you doing, bro? Not much, man. Not much, man. How about with you? How you doing? I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. I'm lovely. I'm lovely. Listen, listen, y'all don't understand, bro. Um, Matthew Jones is a very, very, very talented man. He's done a lot of um, extremely important things. Um, one of the significant things that he did was when I first got introduced to his uh, concept that he created, I thought that it was a manga. So let's, off the bat, let's go ahead and just uh, address that situation because I know you be at Comic Cons. And you have it in more like a comic format now. So uh, was Boy Beast initially supposed to be a manga? You was like uh, in hope that it would get picked up as anime, or like you know, like what's 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 what? Is it a manga or a comic? Uh, it's a manga that started out as an ebook, and it was uh like when you were like you were saying when it first started out, it was just it was just an ebook that I had typed out and. Um, had help with, with my co-writer and everything. And I just put it on um, Amazon and people seen it. And because of the cover that my man, uh, Mike Tony did, they thought it was a manga. And I made the mistake of just kept getting art from him for the cover art for the ebook. And everybody was like, oh, it's a manga. I'm like, no, it's just an ebook. There's no pictures in it. And because of his style, it stood out like that. It was like, oh, it's a manga, it's a manga. I'm like, no. It's an ebook. It's an ebook. It's an ebook. And then finally, I was like, you know what? People keep saying this, and they keep asking me about it. So I'm like, let me go ahead and find somebody to work with to get it to be a uh, manga. So no, it was it was originally just just an ebook. Okay. Okay. Well, wait. Before we get into that, real quick, um, going into the weight piece. We're supposed to be like a little crystal ball. Like, if, if y'all watch, if y'all read it, then like, you no, know, like like a. You know, you know, like Naruto holds uh, the shuriken, some something like that, or like you know, like the Rasengan, some some something like that. Uh, anyway, who is Matthew Jones? Oh uh, man, <laughs> um, I'm a I'm a little bit I'm a little bit of everything <laughs> in my mind at least in my mind at least. But I'm just a I'm just a dude that grew up in Southern California. Um, I, I I like manga, anime, comics, and stuff. Uh, did jujitsu, still do it, not as much as I used to. Uh, jujitsu, MMA stuff for the past. How's my son? TK is 16, so for the past 16 years and stuff, and that stayed with me since what 2000, 2005, 2006. So yeah, I've been doing it since then. Whether it was Southern California, North Carolina, Indiana, now and in, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I I do it everywhere I go. So, but more but more important more importantly, I would say I'm a person that stands on the truth that I see, like more mm. than anything. Like I, mm. I I I was the kid in elementary school that got they got kicked out because when they and I remember not kicked out when I got pulled outside the class in first grade because they were talking about Santa Claus Santa Claus and I was like wait a minute. Santa Claus ain't real. <laughs> and my teacher was like, uh, you gotta you, you gotta come out of here. So she was telling me, you can't say that. You can't. But wait a minute, why? Because I, I know their parents do all this. So I can't I can't say that Santa Claus ain't real. Like, no, because you might hurt. And I always that's always stood out to me. Even as a child, it was like, I'm not I'm not with if I see something that just doesn't make sense to me and I know it's blatant, I'm I'm not with that. So I even put that in my stories. And y'all see me talk about that on Facebook and everything too. But more than it, yeah, that, I'm just I just stand on what I see and family and all that other stuff is 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 what's mm. important. Okay, I just gotta address two things. First thing first, or three things. First thing first, I did not know you were a martial artist. Uh, that is awesome, black martial artist, always a thing. 
Um, second thing, you're the second black martial artist I've had on here. Sensei uh, Stokes, martial artist, and he, he teaches. And uh, yeah, his kids went tournaments and stuff. They, they got like trophies and stuff uh, mm-hmm. at his dojo, which is awesome. And, and he, he's a, a, a black owned comic shop or artist. I can't remember. I can't remember off the top of my head. I, talk, I, 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 get, I get it before the interview. But, yeah. Uh, so yeah, black, black martial artist, yo. We're here. <laughs> Oh, definitely. Oh. Oh. And third thing, what's third thing about this? Oh, you can't diss Santa? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm 30 years old, and I know Santa Claus isn't real, but I'm not going to tell other people that. I'm going to pretend like Santa Claus is real. It's Santa. Okay? Now, now, whether it's Santa Claus, black or white. Huh? So don't come around me then. I can't, don't, don't bring your kids and stuff around me. I... <laughs> You're a dream killer. Santa Claus isn't real. You adopt it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it brings you. It brings you to reality quicker. That's true. That's true. All right, let's get into this boy beast, man. Let's get up in this, man. Let's get up in yeah, this. Yeah. Okay. We well, right. Y'all don't understand, man. It's Matthew Jones, man. Y'all five years. Five. Count them. One, two, three, four, five. Five years. I finally got a hold of him. I finally got a hold of him. <laughs> All right. All right. So, um. Boy Beast, mm-hmm. where, where did you get the inspiration to to create this uh, comic, man? This idea, Boy Beast, where, where did you get the idea from? Uh, Boy Beast was, I, I had bounced that around for the longest. And the thing about Boy Beast is that the werewolf is my, I always tell people the werewolf is my favorite horror movie monster. because But it's always, it's always there like mindless, just running around, killing people, doing wild mess, or uh, the vampires got him in some, some type of subservient. And I'm like, I don't like that. I've always liked the Hulk. I've, uh, I've liked like that Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type story. Yeah, yeah, transformations. Transformations. Yeah, yeah. and it's like uh, werewolves fit into that same category. So I was, I've, I've ri- I had it written since like 2012, like here and there stuff of it, just just mm-hmm. gonna be all kind. It's gonna be all over the place. Then I finally zeroed in and got it done for the ebook. But that's basically where, uh, as far as the idea of it, it was just my love for werewolves and like horror and horror style and manga. It was, mm. it, was it was my own style that I was putting together. Mm. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. Um, who is Takeo John? Am I saying this correctly? Takeo, 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 Takeo. Takeo. Taki Mushrooms. Takeo. You know, black people are gonna ruin it. Black people gonna ruin it. My name is Trayvon. I get called Trevor. Well, I get no, no, white people call me Trevor. Black people call me just Vine. It's Vine. Vine. Trace. Why people say Trace too? Everybody ruins my name. Anyway. All right, no, Takeo. Yeah, okay, so um, is this 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 inspiration from somebody you know? Um, it's like a brother or somebody. Takeo. No, no, it's my it's my son's name. My um my son, his name is Takeo, and, and he has and he's my he's my inspiration for this character. And the funny thing is, my my son grew up to be kind of built like the character. He's about he's sixteen now. He has autism, so he doesn't speak a lot. And um and so just just translating, I would even I would even show him the art of uh, Takeo and and stuff. And we call him we call him uh. We call him TJ in the book. We call him TJ, yeah. but I call my son TK for for Takeo. So so I'll show I'll show TK TJ from the book, and he he'll he'll give me the nods or he'll be like whoa. So he um so he approves of the character and stuff. But that's where he got that's where I got uh the inspiration of um of, of TJ from is from my son. Shout out to parents. Shout out to parents out there. We support black parents here. All right. All right, so let's, let's let's get into some of these characters a little bit. Um, Wagner, if you see Wagner, he kind of reminds me of Leroy from Tekken. So Leroy from Tekken, black dude, dreads. Yeah, uh, let's talk about it. Who's Wagner? Wagner is um, and I didn't even, I didn't even was Tekken. I don't when I had that. I don't think uh Leroy was. No, nah, Leroy wasn't out yet. Yeah, he uh, wasn't out yet. So I was like, yeah, but I, I do see, I do see it. Hell, I even think that I put my hair in a ponytail. I might as well go as Leroy for uh, Halloween or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, and martial, martial artists. Oh, 
but uh, with uh, Wagner, he's a friend of TJ's father, and uh, they they knew each other in the war that happened uh, years ago and stuff. And he kind of becomes TJ's mentor. So that's where that's what that's what's going on with Wagner for the most part. He's he's a magic user. He's he, he all of them have different all of the werewolves and void beasts have different sets of powers. And TJ's is unique to him because nobody else can like get it unless they try to steal it from him or something like that. But Wagner is the magic user in uh, the Void Beast universe amongst the werewolves. Mm. So that's what's unique about his, his bloodline is nobody can you can't inherit the type of power he has. You no, take no that power from him. You can't learn it. You can't you can't do it. It's not like you can go to TJ them and learn what his family does. That's that's only to his family. It's unique to his bloodline and his werewolf bloodline to his family. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I know like there was something about like the void or something like that, and uh, like I, I, I'm, I'm gonna get into that in a second. But uh, um, who's the silver hair chick that uh, you know, out of spoilers, silver hair chick that assists him. We're not gonna tell too much, but the, the silver hair chick. Let's, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, the um, the young lady that's Denise. She's one of the um, young ladies that him and his father were going after because there were a lot of them just, just kind of ended up missing. They didn't know what was going on in the city. They were finding bodies of young girls and stuff. And TJ wanted to go and help. And one of my and that was my inspiration for that. And there's a reason the, the wild thing is like it's happened. Before. It's it still happens amongst black people to where um, black girls just end up go, just end up missing sometimes. And and I, I remember a story. I don't remember where it was at, but it was uh, some black girls had gone missing and nobody knew what was going on. And and one got away. And it's always like that. And then even recently in Kansas City, they have some dude that black folks are telling telling the police in Kansas City, like, hey, we got three girls missing. We, we got we found three girls dead. Four of them have gone missing. It's a serial killer around. And the cops are telling the black folks in Kansas City, we, we don't. That's just unfounded. You ain't ain't nothing going on. Then they find we don't police. We don't police for your kind. Yeah, and then and then they find find out that the dude they find the guy because one of the girls got away, and uh told the and told the police that there were other girls and she, they seemed she was tortured and there were other girls that got killed. But then he has more and he was right on the same street that all these black people, these black men and black women were looking for these girls at right on the same street. I say that to say in Boy Beast. That is where I got my inspiration from for these young girl, these young black girls going missing. And Denise is one of the ones that gets away. She ends up with her own powers because she too got experimented on, but she uh she is she is one of the heroes of the story. Hmm. Without going well, too much about her. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's a very, very, very sensitive subject. And um yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all look out for your people, man. Seriously, y'all, y'all look out for your people. Um, no, like that, that's a very sensitive subject. Y'all almost had to tearing up there for a second. You know, uh, I, that's something that I, I talk about on Clubhouse. Um, you know, we we get on the internet to argue and bicker, and and you know, where are those conversations about how many black people go missing a week compared to a month compared to a year? That's very scary. Mm-hmm. And you know, you have people that just don't give a damn. They are more concerned with themselves, and uh, and I, that's a very sensitive subject, man. Uh, yeah. I, uh, but I, I'm glad that you uh, you know, speaking up on it. And I, I wish that we spoke up more on that and weren't about what Kanye West or somebody did. Like, I don't care about that. But, all right, shout out to Denise. Yeah, black woman, we love y'all. All right, my man Kyle. Uh, is it Kyle? Kyle? I'm gonna say his name. Kyle. Kyle. I, I, I pronounce it Kyle. Kyle is the man. He, from the moment I saw him, I knew he was like the the the, the, the second hero, you know, the side character hero kind of character. But just he, he has a presence about him. I don't know if it's the hair. I don't know if it's the look. But he just has this presence about him to where you just know that's Sasuke. Yeah, that, that's Sasuke. That's definitely Sasuke. <laughs> um, he's Sasuke. Like, we love him. We like him. You know, if you're a Black Clover fan, you know, you know, One Piece, uh, he's uh, uh, Zoro. 
You know, like little sidekick, little freaking uh, you do Hawker so he ain't, you know, whatever you want to do. Let's talk about that guy. Um, talk about the name and just like who inspired you. Uh, kind of want to uh, like the, the characters itself. Let's talk about that. For a second. Um, Kyle is my resident healer of the group. <laughs> He's the one that um, that that first welcomed. Uh, TJ when he came to the when he comes to the werewolf camp and he and he I I explained more about him in chapter five but right now he's my resident healer and I, as far as like I wanted him to be TJ's I wanted him to be TJ's first like friend amongst all of the other werewolves and stuff and that's kind and that's kind of where I came from with him he can he can fight and everything but not as good as as the other ones but he makes up for it with his ability because he he can tear through everything. He can he can get down, but he makes up for it with being a healer and being able to help the the other werewolves and stuff. And he has his okay. own werewolves and everything too. It's just that since they're all so spread out because of things that happen that's going on with them, he's there to learn how to um. Do, he's learned he's he's there at the camp to learn how to fight better, basically. Because right, okay. Yeah, healing is what he's. The, I would consider him my shaman of the uh, groups, but he and he uses and he uses his ability to heal. And 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 as far as inspiration from him, I would say, I, um, I'd probably say Sokka from Avatar. Like, like, uh, like, like, like Sokka might be my might be my uh was more of my inspiration for him. Um, when me and Francis was doing it, Francis came up with more of the um, design for him. So mm. I, that's hats off to my artist Francis. He he came up with that design and stuff. So that's how he came out. But he but it, inspiration and in how I see Kyo is more of a is more of a Sokka from Avatar. Okay, hey Sokka was clutch man. People, and he, oh yeah, he was also a ladies man. Like he was that. also a ladies man. He he had all the ladies man. And, and low key people didn't know this, but Tuff actually had a crush on Sokka. Oh, yeah. um, that's, that's my yeah. You look you look at Sokka kind of more like the Hawkeye of the group. Like you know, he, he's no Thor. He's definitely no Black Panther or Captain America. He's definitely ain't no Tony Stark. But no, he, he, he's useful. He's there, mm -hmm. he's, there, he's there for a reason. Yeah. Okay. Zombies. Oh, oh, oh. oh. All right. Wild zombies. You said why zombies? Yes, why zombies? Because I like zombies. Um, zombie movies are my favorite, and my favorite zombie movie is still good old uh, Black and White Night of the Living Dead. Just I, I, that that is my favorite. That changed that that movie changed how I looked at a lot of horror movies and zombie movies. Just like kind of how Berserk changed how I look at the anime. There's there's certain things that just change and stick. And so I always like zombie stories. It was just, it was just like okay, what could I do that was different with zombies? And they're there, they, they cause issues, but they don't really mess with, they don't mess with... Uh, werewolves. Where, zombies don't mess with werewolves. They know not to mess with werewolves for the most part. It's just, they're kind of scooting around. They know that even if they do anything, the, the werewolves are bigger than them, they're faster, they're stronger. They just know not to mess with them. It's, it's, it's it, it doesn't, it, it, it would do them no good. And so... Um, they don't mess with the werewolves. Now, the thing about the zombies in my story, and I'll go ahead and talk about it, is that the uh, going back to Denise, the experiments that this doctor was doing, he was trying to figure out how to cure the zombie virus. And he ends up injecting these girls, which kills them. Denise is one of the ones that lives. She ends up having the ability to control zombies. My reasoning behind that is that and so you may not see you don't see the zombies be as much as a threat anymore later on except for in different areas or or um or unless they're being forced to do something which the De these controls the reason why i went with that like i said going back to the things is that uh back in the day it was always this thing where like zombies came from like a voodoo priest or zombies were always yeah yeah shaman a yeah, shaman. they yeah, they were always connected to black people. Even the the original zombies were just like black people with whited out eyes or something and, and dusty skin. They those were the original zombies because because white folks said that black folks, especially when it came to voodoo and stuff like that, 
they had some magical powers to bring people back to the dead or, or put them in some type of trance to where they could do whatever. So originally somebody controlled the zombies. It was a, like you said, like a shaman, a voodoo priest or something that that controlled the zombies. They weren't just running around mindless. It was, well, yeah, they had a goal and it was made. They had an objective. They had an objective. Somebody else. So I use that with this story with Denise. And so she's gained the ability. She's basically like a necromancer to where she can't die and she can control the zombies. That's that's part of her abilities. So that's what's going on with the zombies in, in that right. story. And she she seems kind of busy. She got she got her hands full, you know, like what, yeah, what, what, yeah. what TJ, TJ in the game got going on. Like she 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 got her own thing. I, I kinda of like that. You know, like, like certain characters pop in, like, hey you and just like right, hey bye. So real quick, yeah, I just want yeah. to address I just want to address something about the term zombies. And also mermaids. Um that was a Haitian, that's a Haitian thing. You know, rather the term zombies and uh mermaids, that was a Haitian thing. And, you know, it just kind of seems like this is something I always talk about, you know, white people and other people like to coin something and just oh well because we take it because we coined this, not all credit comes to us, you know. Whatever whatever the past is is not important. It's just what we say. Cause um and actually from what I was in in um well what I was told from a West African uh, friend of mine um the term zombie is something the Europeans made Brits made and the actual term is actually is zombie and it's actually a a method that the Congolese used to use towards the Brits and they used to scare the living shit out of them and they didn't appreciate that. Because they didn't like that. They didn't they, like that's why they demonized a lot of um African spirituality. They came with Christianity and you know start brainwashing people. And I, again, this is nothing against anybody who's religious, but I'm just giving out a point. This is historical facts. You know, yeah. they demonized these people culture and told them, you know, you don't need that. Stop practicing, you know, whatever your traditions was and you know, just fights, whether you're Catholic or Christian, you know, that that's the only thing you need to worry about. But anyway, it's on me was a method that they used to go inside themselves and tap into their ancestral um, uh, knowledge and get insight from their ancestors. And so they did, the Brits did not like that because they were beating the uh, the British. And you, if, if you know history, the Dutch screwed over the Congo, uh, King Leopold, and the Brits screwed over uh, Congo, you know, um, freaking uh, like England. And mm -hmm. so, you know, like, and actually, you want to talk about historical facts. During the Holocaust, King Leopold, uh, like during that same time, King Leopold the first, second, and third killed way more Congolese than uh than, than Jews during the Holocaust. And so, you know, not, you know, when it comes to the Olympics, they say, you know, nobody should come and protest because then it becomes the uh the uh, the, uh oppression Olympics. And I I'll say, okay, I get that. But at that same time, let's keep that same energy. Why are we constantly seeing movies about Jewish people and constantly being reminded about the Holocaust when there are people who equally, if not more, and, and actually the suffering that the Congolese dealt with lasts longer than what the Jews had to deal with in the Holocaust. And these are historical facts. This is not me taking any shots at Jewish people. I have not Jewish friends. I have, uh, I, like, I have nothing against Jewish people. But if we're going to keep it all the way above, Let's keep it all the way up. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that we should feel sorry for anybody, but I'm saying that if we're gonna do the oppression Olympics. Okay, there are people who suffer more or in uh, longer. They kill and they kill way more uh, Congolese than, than Jewish people. But anyway, back on track. Mm -hmm. Um, what the hell is the void? The thing that's been here since the beginning. <laughs> like I, I, like I have. Uh, part of the thing with Void Beast is that um, TJ can control dark matter, dark energy, that type, type of stuff. So he can teleport, create weapons, all this type of stuff, create black holes, all this mess. And I've always been fascinated with uh, with the dark, with the dark as far as like space, stuff like that, even when I was a kid. And, and when I would read, when I would read and how I look at like like an anime and stuff like that, a lot of stuff is like, except for what is it? Um, except for what? Black, black, uh, what is it? Um, black Dynamite, Black Panther, Black Lion, no, 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 Black, black anime Fighter, with, Black Racer. Asta, with the Asta Kid. Black Clover. Black Clover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I've looked at some of that. I still haven't fully 
I'm like, eh, I don't like this guy. <laughs> like, I just, no, he's cool. I, like, he's cool. Trust me. Arthur's cool. Okay. Um, and and this is just me going by the first, not not no overall. I'm just that was just the first couple of episodes and stuff. But my thing with the darkness is like, I took it from basically how how uh, in the Bible it talks about how God is like, let there be light. And there was darkness. Like there was darkness before anything else. God was just chilling in the darkness. And it's like that, like so, so either either God was chilling there or he was somewhere else, and then he came amongst the darkness. But there was darkness, and 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 the darkness is never done away with. So I'm like, I I want the, the void beasts come out of that. They're they they're they were with God among, amongst the darkness, and that's and that's why I go with that. Is and and I explain more of it in the later chapters. So I so that's something I definitely don't want to give too much away on. So I want folks to read that and see where I was coming from. But that's what the that's what the void is. The void is the darkness that was there since the beginning of time. And is and, and it's always gonna be there. And it's in everything and everybody. So that's why I, that's why I go with that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Nah, you know, um when I when I think of like narratives and I think of like uh notions that people uh you know are taught, I think of um you know, you don't know something's offensive, but depending on what it is, until somebody says it. You don't know you probably shouldn't say this until somebody addresses it and says, you know, you probably shouldn't say this. And so, and so um, that I think that um, it's just all about, you know, what you're taught. And like I said, I don't, I don't want to get too political because that's a conversation we can have off stream. But, um, you know, all I'll say is I've never met a Satanist that just blatantly verbally attack me or scrutinize me because we disagree with each other. But I have met several Christians that get upset and condemn you to hell just because you say you don't believe in um you don't you don't believe in Christianity. So mm. um you know like that there's that these 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 are actual facts. Um but I don't I don't necessarily hang out with either either or I don't hang out with Satanists, atheists, Christians, Catholics, Muslims, I don't hang out with anybody. But I know everybody. Yeah I would I would definitely say like even going back to what we were talking about like with the void and the darkness thing. That's a, that's the a thing. I I would talk about myself. That's the thing that I had like issues with. Like even for me, growing up, it was a thing where I was I was always the taller, quiet kid. Like I I would talk about certain things, but I was always like really like quiet when it came to being around people. Then people and so people felt like they could do whatever they wanted to. And I hate that. And and it's like it's like it took me getting beat up like once, <laughs> and then my grandmother there were like, hey. You can't be letting this happen. You you got to do something about this. After that, it was just, hey, okay, then I'm going to just have to beat the mess out of people. I used to get in right. trouble fighting and stuff all the time. And that uh-huh. would, just let, would just let me to martial arts later on in life. But that was after I done did all kind of wild stuff. And so my thing is, is that at first it was like I was nervous and became like a, a defensive thing. Then it became like an mm-hmm. offensive thing. Then after mm. a while, I was like, people were like, oh, you on you, you don't this and that, you're gonna get beat up and this and that. I'm like, yeah, I got beat up, Lenny. I've got beaten up. Like I'm getting beaten up in front of 500 people or more. It's like it, it is what it is. But after a while, I just became, I just I knew going to that darkness thing again. I knew what I was about. And and I and I look into it and I'm like, I'm just gonna take this and let this be what this is. Cause there's no getting it. There's no getting it out of me. There's no sitting this down and being like, "Oh well, you know what? I, I'm not that." Not, no, no, no. I am ready and willing to fight just, just about any and everybody at a moment's notice. And it's and it's a thing that's that's in me. It's not. It's it's something that I've had to deal with going from people telling me you shouldn't do, you should, do this and that. And it's just and it's and it's where that darkness. What of some some would say darkness. I don't see it that way anymore. Um. That darkness, you got to deal with it and be able to uh, be calm with it and be fine with what it is and and be able to make it be useful to you. So that's why I started doing stuff like MMA and everything and stuff and, and learning and learning where to direct it and how to do it and stuff. So so I wouldn't be out doing wild stuff and being out in the streets doing ignorant, ignorant stuff that I don't need to be doing. But it right. just, and then even with like 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 I said, keeping it on me. The darkness thing is just a thing where it's like I know where I stand at, like I was talking about in the first. I know where I stand at in most issues. So it's like 
you got to be able to talk to your darkness and 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 be fine with address it. it. Right. And, and address it, and more and more, and, and understand it where you stand at, not with what nobody else is talking about, not with how other people say it should be or how it shouldn't be. You got to be fine with what your darkness is and understand it and be real with yourself about it. That way, you'll always tell yourself the truth about what's going on with you. And no matter what anybody else say, you've already said it to yourself if you, or you've figured out ways to get around it so that whatever they say about you don't bother you. I think that's part of right. what, uh, what stuff now. So, yeah. No, nah, no, I, I actually feel you on that because it's just like, um, you know, um, different methods and like from what the people at home listening, different methods like but are similar to what he's saying. Is understanding how to address yourself from a psychological perspective. You have to so you have to address yourself for your flaws and for your pros, like for your pros and for your cons. You have to address these things. You have to be real with yourself. That's called being self-accountable. You know, when you hold yourself accountable for something. And some people, a lot of people, aren't necessarily that mentally strong to hold themselves accountable. And they like to make excuses for the reasons why things are, you know, going the way that they're going in their life, or they just they, they, they like to make it somebody else's problem. And so what he's essentially saying is you have to know, you have to address these things. And um, I, uh, an analogy I want to use is uh, finding Dory. Uh, her parents knew that she had a, um, a disorder for memory loss. So they put they taught her since a baby, like since a kid, methods on how to find her way back to uh, like whatever, whatever. How to how to deal with that, and I think that that's that's a lot of sim that symmetry that a lot of parents need to understand. That's a lot. Some parents will just be negligent to addressing some of the flaws they may see in their children, and so this kid grows up then not being held accountable and thinking that it's okay to function and behave and do whatever without being held responsible. And actually, when somebody does try to make them responsible, they want to get upset and then condemn that individual. So that is something they weren't necessarily conditioned or taught or programmed. And so that is like essentially what 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 he's saying. But anyway, um so we address the monsters in the void, kind of going off of a uh, West African uh spirituality. I do believe that uh like there are things that are beyond earth. Like I, I believe that there are things that on earth that are beyond humans. Um, you know, like and that's that's just kind of getting out of the social media mindset, getting out of like the, the, the programming like mindset, and just going into like the philosopher mindset. And I, I just don't like the subjectivity because you know I'm like okay, so you acknowledge that there are things that are beyond us. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Who's to say which one's good or which one's bad? Just because of all the methods that that you've been all the in, that, like things that you've only subjectified your knowledge of understanding told you this is good, this is bad. Or you say which one is which. So how you not know that the bad ain't the good and the good ain't the bad? No, who's a no? You don't know that. So um I like the idea of uh, like, you know, when, when I say like the monsters beyond like Earth, think of HP Lovecraft, that freaking code of his, that rapist, that freaking racist, crazy bastard. Um but no, he plays around stuff a lot of um African uh spirituality. A lot of it. Um, all, all those concepts, Cthulhu, all that, all that West African stuff, man, going back to what we said earlier, you know, white people have an issue with uh, plagiarizing other people's information and uh, not giving credit, not giving source material. Like, hell, even Plato plagiarized off of freaking um, African um, concepts. And, you know, like, if you want to quote me, um, go look up uh, Black History on, go, go, go on YouTube, Black History Lost, stolen in the street, and watch that documentary. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't like the Lovecraft. I don't, I didn't, like, if people, I don't, you, I wouldn't use his name if I was to do something. And I like that. That I always say either I will either say Cosmic Horror or um, Eldritch, Eldritch Horror. Yeah, I don't, I don't do the whole Lovecraftian thing. I can't. I don't no, know. no, no, no. Just using it as a reference point because a lot of people like a lot of the content that's covered. Is all plagiarized. And it, it, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I feel you on yeah. that. I just, I just would never call anything. I wouldn't even put it in anything. I wouldn't love craft in for me, me personally. Not nobody else has to do that. It's no issue. I'm not talking about nobody else. I'm talking about just me because I like that Eldritch star style of horror and stuff. 
and everything is just I nah that guy. Like you said, I'm what you said was true. I yeah, that guy. <laughs> yeah, that guy, that guy it, freaking Walt Disney too. <laughs> I know. Like, bro, like this, this is all information that you can go and look up on that. Like, look, this is all information you can go find. This is information you can go and find. Okay? Like, but, like, um, all right, let's see here. Uh, I guess uh, Rex is just a hater. No, Rex, you know, the, uh, the one wolf. <laughs> I guess, I guess he's, just a, he's a player hater. That's yeah, Rex, to it. yeah, Rex is, Rex is, Rex is a hater. And, and his and his reasoning for being the way he was is because he didn't feel like TJ's father was anything important. He didn't feel like he was he was amazing. Rex is like a warrior. He's he's more he was closer to that basic style of werewolf. But he comes from a clan of werewolves that he's like a big strong werewolf, and that's why the weapons he carries, all that type of stuff. His clan comes with more of that. Like he would be, he would be around Conan or something. That's, that's yeah, brute, brute, that's brute. brute. That's they're brute. brute. I mean, what do you say, that brute? He seems an opportunity with TJ to go go to some old school methods to to get to get TJ's powers because old werewolves because it was a thing where like werewolves would like eat people and anything and they would get their uh and I, I can't remember what story I seen it in. They were like some people. No, nah, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about because it's the same thing with vampires. Like if they drink certain people's blood, they get out. Yeah, of some people feel like if you eat the heart of a lion or something, you get their spirit and you get that energy, you get that power from it. And that's what Rex. Rex is one of them old school uh, werewolves, and he's just he he's a hater. That's just what he is. He's a hater. Shoulder, you know, with the shoulder, baby. Shake haters off. Shake haters off. Okay. Oh, damn, we are almost out of time. Damn, uh, damn, Matthew. Five years in the making. Five years in the making, and we are almost out of talking about these boy beats, ladies and gentlemen. Um, there are a few black historians that uh inspire me. One of my favorite has to be John Henry. Mm-hmm. Has to be John Henry. Has to, because I just think about where we're going, especially in technology now. Mm-hmm. We're getting ready in the next five five years. We're gonna we're going into the metaverse. You know, if you ever seen Ready Player One, I don't know if it'll be the extent that the major. I could definitely see Ready Player One, especially with the VR glasses and things like that. Then they know I could definitely like the next five ten years. You know, we're 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 going to see some Ready Player One type stuff, especially with how gaming is, how kids are so in tune with games, whether they're on a tablet, whether they're on a phone, whether they got a console. Um. Um. Come back to the John Henry thing. I think it's important that you got to turn your phone off and step outside. Because a lot of people are not saying everybody, I'm not saying anybody in particular, are insecure about themselves, they're insecure about their reality, whether that be their community, whether that be their family, you know, and, and also themselves. And they like to try to find escapisms, you know, escape escapes. And uh, I think a lot of people. Your social media, whether on social apps like Clubhouse, uh, Twitter Spaces, um, whether 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 they are like the, the chat, like like the video, like there's a bunch of different apps out there you can go on and just you know like talk to people, and you know that's not a bad thing. You know everybody got to find you know like their niche. You know for me it's dancing. Um, for me for me it's dancing, and practicing martial arts, and definitely you know like help you know. You know, coexist with you know my pros and cons. You know, like uh, you 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 do martial arts, you know. But uh, I think sometimes you got to step away from your phone and you know intake reality. You know, sometimes when I'm driving, I cut my uh, my phone off. I like to play music while I'm driving. I cut it off, roll my windows down, cut the AC off, and just you know pay attention to my environment. And I, I think that that's very important. But going back to John Henry, John Henry was a man um, that they don't make no more. You know, he believed in things by the book. You know, I kind of wish that he kind of, you know, my dad always said work smart, not hard. And, you know, some people just get content on the, doing things, you know, like how, how I was taught to them. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, I just, um, I love that story of man versus machine. And I've always admired, you know, man versus machine. You know, you know we as humans, or, you know, we as black people, I think we some of the most creative and most uh charismatic and uh um uh, just 
sort resourceful people on this planet. And uh, but we get underlooked. And when I think of a story like John Henry, you know, this man beat the machine. He lost his life doing it, um, but he beat the machine. And so I think that was a really cool callback uh, that you, you, know, you referenced him in your uh, in, in your, uh, your 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 content. Yeah. Because you know I, I think you know, a lot of those stories you know, have to you know, continue to be highlighted because of you know we don't tell them and can't leave it up to the white people. But the white people only gonna tell them when they can make money off them. Yeah, basically, basically, and and I wanted to, and I wanted to have um, I wanted to have John Ritter because he was one of those Black American folklore characters and all that, and it was a thing where that people, so many people, it's like <laughs> they'll they'll say things to Black people like, you know, the Chinese built the railroad, and I'm not saying it wasn't there. I'm not saying they Chinese people wasn't there, but originally that was all Black people. That was all Black people, and some of them. Some of them were enslaved. Some of them were locked up because trying to get out of slavery or because they felt like, you know, you you were in debt to me, so I'm going to lock you up or you trying to get away. And, and, and a lot of them were locked up or enslaved and they put them out there in them railroads and a lot of black people lost their lives putting that, uh, putting those railroads together. So I think right. it's, it's, I don't I don't like the idea of trying to take out black Americans from things that we know they are a part of and what they were a part of and then just be like, oh no, you guys weren't there. But the whole time you got stories like John Henry and other people that were there and um and 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 the black folks that you can see that are being those pinstripes from being locked up working on railroads. And and most of them weren't lo locked up because they did anything wrong. A lot of it was was it like I was saying was sharecropping stuff or trying to get away from slavery, all that type of stuff. We can get into that later. But John Henry Showing that he had the work, the work ethic to outbeat the the new machine is something that's important. And some people say, and I know some people said it was like, um, and he he died. Then they have other stories that say he lived and all kind of stuff. But it's a folklore thing. But he's he's a he's a important um, black history folklore or black history historical character as well. So. I definitely had to uh, add John Henry and make, and that was TJ's inspiration for why he used the hammers because his father would tell him stories about about John Henry and how he uh, outbeat the um, he beat the machine and everything. Right, you know, you know, it's funny they're, they're not hit stories about Nat Turner. <laughs> like Nat there Turner? no kid stories. Uh, like there, there no kid stories about Nat Turner. Like maybe Martin Luther King. Like I, I'm, I'm thinking that I'm reflecting as I was a kid. I saw Martin Luther King, you know, animation films. I saw John Henry, um, maybe a Nazi the Spider, a few Nazi the Spiders, um, but yeah. there are no stories about John Henry. Like uh, I don't, I, and I don't necessarily remember seeing like stories about Harry Tubman either. But um, again, that, that's another conversation for another day. But like, no, like I just, uh, I appreciate highlighting, you know, black excellence. I call it black excellence. You know, we ain't got to call it black history. I call it black excellence. Um, when you think about all the inventors, you know, um, like there are so many different inventions that we would not have right now if it wasn't for a black person. Yeah. And there's no credibility to that because some white person, some white man part, uh, patented it. Um, and so it's just like, yeah, like I just, uh, there's, there's so much prestige that's not being told. And so I feel like it's up to us to be able to do it. And I think the way that you're doing it is amazing because it's not too preachy because, you know, some people like to claim white people. Uh, it, it feels preachy. It feels, it feels preachy. And I, okay, well, cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get the point across where everybody can have fun and not feel like they're being preached to. Yeah, that. that, yeah, that's definitely what I was what I was going for. Like I said, like with the, the black girls going missing, the John Henry thing and some of my other books, I just like to try to sprinkle that stuff in <laughs> and make it a part of... Uh, the stories without it, without just outright saying, "Hey, it's like this," or, or it's just, or being heavy-handed with it. So that's what I try to do, at least. Peace. Peace. Void beast. I'm going to create a void ball, and I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to destroy all of you, void beast, brother. Matthew, we are all out of time. I can't believe it. I got Matthew Jones on here. Boy Beast himself. Uh, brother, 
you got anybody you want to shout out? Uh, tell them where they can find you and follow you, Brother Matthews. Um, uh, on YouTube, I got Akachi Jones. Uh, same thing on Instagram as Akachi Jones. And then you can go to the website where the books and everything are. And it's uh, AkachiComics.com. Um, shout outs and all that good stuff is my artists and my team that I work with. Stephanie, uh, Francis Martellano, Arba de la Cruz, um, my colorist, uh, some of my other artists, Chev, uh, Cyrus, um, Andy Nilio, uh, a bunch of people that I work with that I've been working with on my books for the past few years and everything. So, um, and then some of my other people, Ruben Warren, other people that 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 know and we work together and we keep ourselves <laughs> sane with a lot of messes going on. But uh, Swag Patrol. Yeah, uh, so so it's a it's a it's a bunch of people, but I, I I rock with the people that rock with me. Basically, that's a that's how I look at it. Whether you done bought a book from me, whether you done came to a con with me, uh, came and, and spoke to me, b- bought books, hang out with me, I, I rock with y'all. I may not say everything that y'all agree with, and I never will. I'm never saying anything that y'all agree with, but I respect y'all, and and, and I'll show y'all respect as long as you show me that too. Right on. Listen, bro, we are all out of time. Y'all, listen, Matthew Jones, y'all get this man a round of applause, okay? Anybody watching this? Matthew Jones is a one of a kind. Boy Beast is a one of a kind. Who would have thought? Black people, werewolves, being constructive, you know what I'm saying? Tapping into that magic, you know? We need more of that. Who would have thought, man? Matthew, thank you so much for coming on, brother, and, um, Listen, please continue to just make more content. Y'all go and support uh, Matthew Jones. Y'all go buy the Void Beast. Y'all go buy the other comics that he got on there. Denise, there's a couple other things that I can't run the top of my head. But um, y'all go support Matthew Jones, man, because this brother is here and we staying here. Okay? Take that, take that, take that, take that. We gon' make it. Okay? We gon' make it. We gon' make it. All right, man. It's been real, man. Thank you for having me. All right, peace. Peace.